Now, it's been over 18 months since the tragic death of the wanted singer Tom Parker following his battle with brain cancer. Tom's wife uh, joins us today to speak about the singer's death and uh, how her life is going nearly two years later. Kelsey, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? We're okay. It, yeah. It's lovely to have you here because I know that this has to be a very strange time for you because you have written a book and you and your husband Tom were together since you were babies. Almost yeah. 13 years. I was 19 when I met Tom, so we were together a long time, 13 years. You know, we were true soulmates. He was the love of my life, my best friend, my world, my everything. And obviously the father of my children as well. And, and such an incredibly talented guy as well. Uh, and father to two young children. Yeah. Uh, what was he like? He seems like he was, you know, such a positive... Um, I think he was just so popular in the circuit and everywhere he went. Yeah, do you know now, like, when I speak to people, they always have a story about Tom, which is so lovely, and I'm so fortunate, and, you know, the kids are fortunate to have that about their dad. Um, but, yeah, he, obviously he was, like, uber-talented. He had so much, like, life inside him. We created the Positive Parkers, but obviously that came from within him that we created the Positive Parkers because we were in the darkest of dark situations, but we tried to make it as positive as possible. So, Kelsey, can you tell us, because you've, you've done that whole thing, you know, you'd, you travelled around with the Wanted, I, I'm sure, when they were on their tours and you were in that lovely lifestyle. I remember seeing you in the Daily Mail when you were walking outside of clubs in London. So there was all that going on. Then when you get this news of your young husband in his early 30s, that he's got a brain tumour. How do you how do you digest something like that? Do you know what? We were in shock, but... So there was a little build-up to the, the diagnosis of a brain tumour, but I thought it could have been epilepsy, something like that. But I said to Tom, like, whatever it is, we will deal with it. Like, we've dealt with so much stuff in life. Like, let's just deal with what life throws at us. And that's what we did. Like, we didn't sit around, we didn't cry. It was like, come on, let's fight this. And that's, that's what we tried to do. We fought it for 18 months. And he was incredibly brave through that fight as well, releasing a documentary, had a mm. massive concert as well to try and raise awareness. But for you... Well, you know, it's so underfunded. The brain tumours only get 1% of funding. They're the biggest killers in under 40s in children. So for us, when Tom was diagnosed, it's like, we need to shine a light on this. I didn't know any of that information and I've had to learn on the way. But, you know, it was... The standard of care hasn't been changed in 30 years. That's frightening. That is frightening to think only 1%. Mm. And, and listen, unfortunately, Tom lost his battle, as we said, 18 months ago. You were only 31 years of age when you became a widow. I mean, how do you deal, you know, with being such a young person going through that with the course of two young children? Again, I was so lucky that I had my children. They got me through it. They got me through the dark days. You know, at the beginning, I literally couldn't get out of bed. It was like a weight had been dropped on me. And, you know, 31 and being called a widow is like, it's so dark and you think you should be walking around in black and having a veil over your face, but it's not like that. And, you know, my kids needed me. They were so little and... Yeah, that, I'm just so fortunate that I've got the kids and he's given me the babies. Mm. And yeah. what what's that like for you? Because obviously... You know, you, you must want to keep him alive. And it's amazing the footage that you have from Tom and him doing his job. But you mentioned that there was something, you were getting your passport one day and Aurelia asked you something about her dad. Yeah, it was last week. I, my passport was on the side and she went, Mum, um, where's Dad's passport? Is it still in the drawer? And I said, yeah, Daddy's passport was in the drawer. She went, why didn't he take it with him where he went? And it's like that question that you think, how do I even answer? I said, oh... Daddy didn't need his passport where he went. Because obviously what I've said to them is, Dad's gone to the sky now and he's watching down on us, but we can only see Dad when we now pass over and and, and go up there to wherever that is. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, I really am bully. I, I think, are they four and two? Is that right? They're four and three now. Four I only three. have a 15-month age gap as well to really, <laughs> you know, top the scenario <laughs> off. <laughs> yes, you went I, first. I have two kids and I know that ain't easy. Uh, but... He, 
How do you how do you address something like this with the children? Do you have to be honest with them? Do you tell them that your their dad's gone to sleep? I mean, how how what's the what's the way that you've dealt with that? I don't say that he's gone to sleep. Okay. Because my advice was if you say that he's gone to sleep, then they're going to be worried to go to sleep because mm. they haven't now seen him for you know eighteen months, longer than eighteen months. So. It's a very long sleep he'd be having. I My advice was be as honest as possible. So I said, Daddy's dead and he's not coming back. And that's the terminology I use. That he, and I use the word, he he has died. He's dead and he's not coming back. So they understand. That's, that must be... Are they so young they, they don't really quite get that, though? Because I can imagine for children to hear that, even for you to pass that message on, must be just, you know, beyond heartbreaking. You know, I do think they do understand that he is dead. And then um, we lost my granddad, actually. So Tom died in the March, and then my granddad died in the December. And then it made them be able to cope with that death. And then, you know, we even lost the Queen, and and she could process. She was like, is my dad and the Queen together now? And I was a bit like, um, they might be. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> See, it's amazing what children can do to make sense of things, you know, uh, with with all this, with all these things that are that are going on. But for you, Kelsey, you're a young woman. You and your lovely husband, you decided to be very public about what he was going through. You're an actress in your own right. People know who you are. And that leads to an awful lot of people feeling like they can have an opinion on you and your life. And obviously, you have a life to live and children too rare. How have people been about you not taking the black veil and not disappearing and, and not acting like you're a widow about to go to the grave? I just think whatever you do, people judge, don't they? And I, my motto is a little less judgment, a little more kindness. I don't think people will ever realise how I actually feel unless you've lived this. So people that have actually lost partners can, can relate to mm. me, but those that haven't maybe find it a little bit hard. But, you know, I wouldn't want to wish this upon anyone. This is the worst thing me and my family have ever had to go through and hopefully ever will have to go through. And it's not black and white and it's quite grey. And some days I wake up happy, some days I wake up sad, some days I'm really angry. Like the roller coaster of grief is so up and down that you can't even. One minute I might be happy, the one, next minute I might be sad. You know, something might remind me of Tom and it makes me really upset. Yeah, I can only, I can only imagine, of course, mm -hmm. so many small things everywhere. You have written a book on this called With or Without Me. It is out, it's available now. And even for you, because you talk about with Tom, but obviously you're now without Tom. How, how are you coping now and, and with trying to move forward? Yeah, I just don't look too much into the future. You know, this is not what I thought my life was going to be. I didn't think I'd be 33 widowed with two children. So for me, don't look. I don't look too far in the future. I live for each day because Tom said we're not all promised tomorrow. So you have to live for the day. And I, do you know what? I don't sweat the small stuff anymore. Things that I might have really panicked about, I don't. Me and the kids have such a great life and I'm so thankful now and grateful for everything and every opportunity that I'm having. You know, even being on this show this morning, like everything, I'm just so thankful that I get to, you know, spread awareness for brain tumours and also tell people my story. And if I'm helping people, then, hey, I've, I've done a little good in the world today. Yeah, and we don't know if we do have tomorrow. It's been a pleasure talking to you, your perspective as such a young woman who's gone through so much with her two children. The book is called With and Without You. Uh, Kelsey Parker, your new memoir. Thank you so much for joining Thank us this morning. We really appreciate it, Kelsey.